Hey everybody, I thought I'd do a little video about Starfield since a few of you are asking what I'm going to do with Starfield, whether I'm going to play it or maybe play it later or what. And so I don't know a whole lot about it, but I know it's a very anticipated game. A lot of people really have been looking forward to this for a long time. But my friends and I have been less than excited about how things have been coming in this game. And I found a video on YouTube that kind of explains my thoughts. And now this guy has been playing Starfield for 30 hours at the time of the recording of his video. So we're going to watch that video and I'll skip through the parts that I need to skip through and just focus on the bits I want to comment on. So let's get started. Starfield from Bethesda definitely is not a bad game. A masterpiece sets new standards and appeals even to players far beyond the confines of its genre. After a fair amount of gameplay, I fail to see where Starfield would achieve this. A hit, on the other hand, performs ex- Wow. Okay, that NPC looks retarded or something. What's going on here? Even back in 2003, 20 years ago, Half-Life 2 had proper eye tracking where the NPCs could look at you properly instead of just kind of wandering around like they're stoned or something. I mean. And I know X4 is worse, honestly, <laughs> let's face it, but this technology is not unknown, you know, I mean, well, anyways, let's keep going. Exceptionally well within the known limits of the genre and technology, Starfield doesn't. What we got is the best Bethesda could squeeze out of the creation engine. Yeah, the creation engine, that's one of the big problems here is that for some reason, uh, Bethesda chose to use a very old engine to create a very expensive and very new game that took them forever to build the game, but they didn't make a new engine for it like they should have. I mean, that's a major red flag for me. It's an ambitious endeavor that feels and plays like a five-year-old game based on 10-year-old tech. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, okay, five-year-old game based on 10 year old tech. Why, why would they choose to do this? A Frankenstein of Fallout 3, Skyrim and Fallout 76. All right, yeah, Fallout 3. Now I did play some Fallout 3. Um, I never got very far into it. I played more Fallout 4 than 3. I never played Skyrim and I, I certainly never played Fallout 76. So I stayed way away from that because I've heard way too many things confirming that this was not something that I would enjoy far too many bugs and uh, not the kind of gameplay I'm interested in, that kind of thing. If you're a fan of these games, you'll be happy, very happy even, and that's fine. The rest isn't up to standard or far from the expectations raised by trailers and announcements from Todd Howard. The most common encounter in the game aren't spacers or pirates, but loading screens. Leave a building, loading screen travel between districts loading uh. screen enter ship loading screen bethesda made the same mistakes as ea did a while ago remember when they forced the frostbite engine upon every studio they own <laughs> the wheel had to be reinvented by each dev team again <laughs> it was the wrong tool for the job the same applies to the creation engine and starfield games like no man's sky proved seven years ago that even small teams are able to create games with seamless transitions between space and planets and only sporadic loading screens overall. Yeah, see, I really like No Man's Sky, actually. I do. In fact, I might do a series on that at some point. Um, you see, No Man's Sky really appeals to me for that exact reason. You feel like you're in it. You're in the game because you can be wandering around on the planet's surface. You can hop inside your ship. You can take off and you can go to another planet and you can hop out of your ship and it's all seamless. There is a slight glitch in the whole seamlessness, of course, in No Man's Sky because you select your ship and you're standing next to your ship and you just boom, kind of teleport into it. You're not, uh, you don't see yourself, you don't see yourself climbing in, you don't actually climb into a ship or climb up the ladder and get into the cockpit. You just kind of teleport into the cockpit from beside the ship and I can forgive that, you know, cause it's the same environment and they just didn't want to animate all that, which is fine. It's fine. 
That's possible if the underlying technology allows for it. The creation engine obviously doesn't. Mm. Which brings me to the next historically strong point of Bethesda RPGs, immersion. Mm -hmm. You always had the feeling you were part of a living, dynamic world. Even right. despite the fact these worlds weren't really dynamic after all. But the illusion mm. was there. Starfield, on the other hand, feels like you're in a small box most of the time. Even though technically the game is gigantic compared to its predecessors. Again, the constant loading screens are the culprit. See, I hate loading screens. I really, really hate them. And you'll notice that X4 doesn't have loading screens. I love that about X4. You can be on a station, walking around, you can hop in your ship, and you really do just climb up the stairs, you know, or the ladder or the ramp or whatever, and sit down in your chair, take off, run around, and, and you can go through jump gates and instantly you're in the other system. There's no loading heretics end. Uh, it's nothing like that in X4. The entire map is going at all times and I just love it. And they even made seamless the uh, transition between uh, high attention and low attention. If you notice on some of my videos, I actually watched a ship uh, flying along and all of a sudden on the, on the mini map or on the map, I could see the ship kind of goes smoothly and all of a sudden it, when it got far enough away from me about, I think about 75 to 80 kilometers, it started going doot, 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 instead of just a smooth going. And that was when it hit the boundary of high attention. I could see that, but it did it seamlessly. And that's what makes it amazing. X4 is my kind of game because of the immersion. I don't like loading screens, not one bit. But why is that? Other games have loading screens as well, but they feel less intrusive to immersion. I suspect it's because how we perceive traveling and the change of scenes. If there only were loading screens while leaving a planet and when we travel between star systems, most people wouldn't mind. These are major locational changes where we mostly accept loading screens. The Everspace is like that. If you've ever played Everspace 2, which is a, a recent game, and I've tinkered with it, um, it's got different locations. and Everspace is is pretty immersive when you know it, it's it's a shooter game. Let's let's face it, it's a shooter game, um, third person shooter game at that. And you can hyperspace from one area to the other, and but you can't really, you know, once you've initiated the hyperspace, you you can't just fly anywhere. You can just uh, you know you're, you're going to another star. And that's all fine and dandy. I mean, that's even Elite is like that. So there's nothing really wrong with that, but it is a series of locations rather than a massive continuous universe. So whatever, I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not terrible, but I, I get what he's saying. They only really hurt if they appear on minor scene transitions. The biggest immersion breakers are situations like traveling between districts where they first show a cutscene how the tram leaves and then switch to the binocular. See, that bothers me. See, I've always hated that. If, you, if you're getting in a vehicle or a spaceship or whatever, and then you so immediately switch to an external camera and you watch your vehicle uh, leaving and it's always exactly the same, you're not in control of anything. It's just showing you a cutscene, basically, of you transitioning from one location to the other. I, that, that, that bugs me. I don't like that one bit. Now, very familiar black loading screen. Even docking on a station results in a loading screen. First we dock via cutscene. Why? Then we leave the ship and the station loads. Why can't what? the ship dock in game if the station needs to be loaded afterwards anyways? Yeah. I bet Bethesda would have handled the situation in another way if not for engine constraints. Eventually, everything combined results in a very fragmented game flow that still throws me off after 30 in-game hours. We now could ask the question, why this bothers a lot of people so much? Well, we've got a game at hands that made the promise to make us feel the vastness of space. Mm -hmm. A ton of Han Solo and Firefly hype. The symbiosis mm -hmm. of likable characters and their cool starships everyone loves. Problem is, what's the vehicle good for if there's nothing to traverse with it? Flying your spaceship is just a minuscule portion of the game. On top of that, 
There's no feeling of flying your spaceship is a minuscule portion of the game, really? Why is that? Oh, is this like where the majority of the game is on the planet and you just kind of use your spaceship to get from one location to the next to the next, but you're that's just it's kind of like Starbound. You know how in Starbound, which is a lot like Terraria, which I've been playing. Uh, Starbound is is where you do all your stuff on the planet and then you hop in your base, your ship, which is your base, and you can transport yourself to another planet and then you teleport down and you do stuff and then you go back to your ship and then you go to a different planet and you teleport down and you do stuff. But you're not actually doing anything in your ship. You're just using it as a, a way to organize your um, location transitions vastness as you're confined to small boxy areas of space most of the time. A Redditor expressed this would bother him, because first and foremost Starfield is an RPG, and he sees your own ship more as a movable base than yeah. anything else. <laughs> Traveling from one system to another requires navigating a clunky map to set your destination and click the warp me there button. The whole process is accompanied by several loading screens. I think it was called Mass Effect and had a simple... I never played Mass Effect. I've heard lots about it, of course. I know I know most of the story, but I've never played it. But it sounds cool. It sounds cool. ...efficient and comfortable point-and-click map to direct your ship towards mm. different locations. Sometimes less is more, it seems. <laughs> The procedurally generated exploration aspect is boring and reduced to scan animals, plants, and resources over and over again. Oh, that was the exact problem No Man's Sky had when it first launched. And why would they be making that mistake? That was what practically destroyed Hello Games until they finally said, we're like, okay, we're going to dedicate our lives to fixing our mistake and do it right. And then they, now they're the most beloved company. Now, now here's Bethesda, a AAA company that's made the exact same mistake that Hello Games made. Oh yeah, let's make a procedurally generated world where you're just exploring, fighting randomly generated creatures and mining resources. No, no thank you. I can do that in No Man's Sky and have a lot more fun, thanks. Most points of interest also are auto-generated, and the few handcrafted areas quickly begin to repeat once you start to explore the hundreds of planets which are not part of any quest. And since there are no dynamic Ooh. factions to be found anywhere, your actions don't matter in the end. The quality of an open world isn't just defined by its size, but rather by how well its substructures are interconnected to form a believable playfield, which is more than the sum of its parts. To have this happen, you need meaningful parts and proper connections which Starfield mostly lacks. As a result, another Redditor said, instead of a vast universe, Starfield really just feels like a room full of doors. Mm, that sounds very bad. That it does, it does sound really bad. I don't, I don't like that kind of game. Nah. The artwork, factions, world building, everything. Mm. And it does look pretty. It, it does look pretty. I mean, it kind of reminds me of, you know, well, I mean, Star Citizen. Star Citizen is a great example of a very pretty game that a lot of work got put into, but ultimately I probably wouldn't want to play it because of a lot of problems, you know? I mean, it looks it looks good. It it does look good, no doubt about it, but the gameplay sounds just atrocious. So if you take it for what it is, Skyrim in space without branching storylines, it's yeah. still an enjoyable experience. If that's what you're after, go ahead. Armies of modders have probably already begun to transform and expand every aspect of the game. Fair point. The 2025 modded version of Starfield will very likely be a whole other, way better game. In its entirety, Starfield feels a bit stale and far below its potential. While playing, I always felt busy but seldom captivated. Yep. Okay, yeah, so... <laughs> I don't need something that makes me feel busy. I am already busy. I have way too much going on in my life to find a game that is way overpriced 
and keeps me busy, but never truly fulfilled. So I don't think so. Thanks, but no thanks. So that's my answer to whether or not I'll be playing Starfield. I'm guessing not. It's just not not my kind of game. I mean, it's got too many things that I find annoying. Um, and there's plenty of other really fun games to be putting myself into. If I'm, you know, my time is limited. I haven't played X4 in two months. And I need to sit down with X4 one of these days uh, within the next week or so and cram out maybe four or five hours of content uh, so that I can make some more videos. But uh, I've been super busy, very, very busy. And I've been conscious of my lack of playing X4. Uh, it's It does bother me because I enjoy it so much, but I have really important things I need to be focusing on right now. So I haven't had time to play it. Uh, the only gaming time I've actually had in the last, you know, month or two has been coinciding with my multiplayer social time. And I've always gotten together with the guys uh, on Saturday anyway to do, um, usually we watch Stargate, to be honest, <laughs> back when sci-fi had good writing. Um, but, uh, yeah, I we've been playing games and, you know, I'll be playing multiplayer games with them on Saturdays. I always have, but I've been playing single player games for YouTube, for you guys, and it's been a lot of fun for me, but at the moment, I haven't been playing any single player games at all. So I hope that doesn't bring an early demise to my series because I put a lot of energy into this series and you guys are enjoying it a lot. So I will be thinking about how I can make sure that this carries on without it completely destroying my very busy schedule. So, because I, I honestly, I put everything into X4 for a better part of half a year. And um, I'm thinking about like, how do I fix that? How do I not just abandon it, but not let it dominate my life. You know, what, what kind of schedule can I release at? Cause I've already knocked it back twice. I went from every day, <laughs> which is just insane. I have to tell you, I went from every day releasing a video to every two days. And I did that for like, what, a month or two or something like that. And then I switched to every three and a half days, which is like Mondays and Fridays. And that's it. And that's what I'm currently at. And I switched to that when I had about 15 episodes built up. So that let me basically ride out August without having to play, but still giving you guys content. Um, I think I've got like three more episodes. I think episode 90 is my currently last recorded content. That's when I'm done with Savage Spur and I come back and I park all my battleships in Windfall. And uh, I'm getting ready to do the um, the Avarice storyline where you you deal with Protection and you deal with that um, Brantley North River guy. And then you have to fight the Windfall uh, people. Uh, Vigor, that's what they're called. The Vigor Syndicate. And I got all my battleships parked next to the station I'm going to be asked to destroy so that they'll just destroy it. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be quick. Um, and then the Vigor will be friends with you. And then, you know, things go pretty well after that, I think. But uh, after that, I don't actually have any definite plans uh, other than just expand uh, my operations, you know, make a lot more stations, make a lot more money, um, build up more military uh, do some more exploration, finish the storylines. You know, I've got the split and the parodied storylines to do. Uh, I've got a couple more stories to finish, the missions and stuff like that. Uh, if I remember right, the Argon versus Terran, uh, that's not done yet. And um, and then after that, uh, probably just steamroll the Xenon, you know. Um, I, I don't know. I've heard... I've heard some people have built themselves up to where they're making a billion credits an hour. And I thought, man, it took me months and months to make a billion credits. I wonder, 
how big of an operation you have to have to get to that point, you know, and do I want to get to that point? Because X4 doesn't have an end, let's face it. It doesn't have an end. So you have to basically say, all right, well, I'm done, at least for a while. And I'm not really, I'm not really there yet. Um, there's a lot more I want to do with it, and I'm having fun with it, but at the moment, I'm too busy to play it. So I have to figure out how to keep the channel going. Like, am I just going to put my multiplayer stuff up for a while? You know, these are going to be like three and a half hours in a stretch every week, you know, because we, we play for a few hours and I record the whole thing. I don't edit it. You know, there's no point. It would take me, it would take me a good chunk of time to edit those videos down to something polished. So I just basically make it like a stream and uh, it doesn't stream, by the way. I don't stream it. I'm just recording it and then I post it. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at right now. That's kind of where I'm at. And I know this part isn't about Starfield, but I, I just figured I'd keep you guys in the loop in terms of what I'm thinking and how I'm doing and the, everything. So uh, by no means am I letting the channel die. So, um, but I, I do have to figure out how to balance it now with my life because I am... I'm working on some projects that are time sensitive and I have to put a lot of energy into those. So, uh, gaming is kind of second priority at the moment. Um, but I will keep you informed anyways. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.